It's the final day of the Tour de France, the world's biggest bike race, but it's also a day where I get to live my childhood dream. I've been given the incredible opportunity to ride the final stage of the Tour de France. Okay, 30 kilometers of it, and I've always wanted to ride into Paris and across the Champs-Élysées. And okay, I didn't get to do it as a pro athlete. Well, now my dream has become a reality. We've been given the opportunity through Oakley to be able to ride with their ambassadors and also their sponsored athletes. I don't know how I've been given this invite. Now I know, it's because Dan Lloyd was busy and I get to wear these. The Tour de France is a big deal to Oakley. A massive percentage of the peloton wear their glasses. And this year also coincides with the launch of their latest prism lenses. This is where they carefully add certain dyes to correct and enhance the colors that your eyes detect, specific to the conditions and demands of different sports. These are the road ones. It's the final day of the Tour de France, and it's a day where the riders can relax and kind of reflect on the last three weeks of racing. But it's also a chance for a big win, a sprinter's big win, if you will. It's often dubbed the world championship for the sprinters. When I started cycling, my dad took me to watch the Tour de France and we chose the final stage as the one we wanted to see. I watched and met the legends of the sport and now I'm going to be rolling down those very cobblestones on the other side of the barrier. And if you can't tell already, yeah, I'm incredibly excited. I have to say it's a, it's a bit strange riding the Tour de France route with police outriders, because even us, just fairly normal blokes, are getting to experience the atmosphere that the Tour de France brings. I guess it touches everyone who's into cycling. We've managed to get all the Tour de France, Skoda cars and all the outriders, so I guess this is as close as it feels like to be in the Tour de France without actually being in the Tour de France, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I've just seen a glimpse of the top of the Eiffel Tower. This is when the riders are being super excited. The finish is near. The Champs-Élysées, then the finish line, is just a stone throw away. Riding into Paris alongside one of the Mavic motorbikes. How cool is that? Getting closer and closer. The excitement's building. Don't want to know what the riders must feel like when they come through just a couple hours later. It's worth noting that the Tour de France hasn't always finished on the Champs-Élysées. In 1903, it was in Ville d'Oré. In 1904, it then moved to Parc des Princes. And then in 1968, it moved to the Velodrome, the Velodrome de Vizenz. And that was the Eddie Merckx era. And it wasn't until 1975 that it went to the Champs-Élysées. Look, my own fans, right there. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. First taste of Paris cobbles is across here, the bridge over the River Seine. We're just riding past the Louvre and onto the Place de la Concorde. <laughs> We've already got the fans cheering. Now the riders are going to be getting seriously excited at this point. The Champs-Élysées is literally just over there. But the first sight of it is we'll see the Luxor Obelisk. And then we know the finish line is in sight. We're now on the back side of the course. I've got the River Seine on my right. And this is fast, smooth tarmac. And the riders are hitting around 55k an hour through here. It's amazing to have such a quiet road 
in the heart of Paris. Under the bridge of the garden. Now right in front of me, I can see the gold statue. The gold statue of Joan of Arc. Once the riders exit the tunnel, they see this iconic statue of Joan of Arc, placed here when she was injured, trying to take Paris back from the English. Now, if you're wondering what that is, that is the Luxor Obelisk, standing 75 feet high, and it's 3,000 years old, and originated from Egypt. In 1933, it was brought to Paris, and three years after that, it was brought over here by Louis Philippe. The tour hasn't always finished in a road stage like the one today. It has sometimes been home to an individual time trial, and if you are into cycling history, you will know of the story of Greg LeMond back in 1989, where he famously beat Laurent Fignon by 58 seconds over the 24km time trial. Greg LeMond, using his aero bars, closed the 50 second gap to Fignon, and in doing so, won the Tour de France by eight seconds on the final stage, which is still the smallest winning margin ever in the Tour de France. I'm sitting at 26 kilometers an hour up the Champs Elysees to the Arche de Triomphe, and I'm putting out 350 watts. And I won't say I'm that heavy, but the riders will be looking for the smooth bit of the road. There's these little grooves where they can sit in where it's a little bit smoother. And there, you can save a few watts. This is definitely living a childhood dream of mine. It's just incredible feeling. I've got the arch to tree off in the distance. The riders will be doing seven laps of this. It's truly an amazing feeling. Although it doesn't look like it, it's quite an incline. The riders were hitting around 50 to 55 kilometers an hour. And that is going some. I mean, I'm in, out of breath talking to you, putting out 300 watts, and I'm only doing 30 kilometers an hour. I'll tell you what though, that is one incredible sight. Whoa! Wow, what an amazing opportunity to be able to ride down the Champs-Élysées just before the Tour de France gets through. Thank you so much to Oakley for giving me this amazing opportunity. Right, if you want some more Tour de France content, why don't you click on these lovely people over here. Cheers!